Hello there, I'm Graham Codrington from a company called Tomorrow Today and this is a podcast for the Enviable Workplace blog. I was thinking the other day about education. I was doing a conference and we were talking about some of the forces that are going to change the world of work in the next few years. And when we got to a question and answer time, one of the participants said, I have three teenage children all in high school at the moment. And my question is very simple. Is their education going to be adequate for the workplace of the future? Now, of course, this is a huge question and can only really be dealt with in terms of generalizations. There are many teachers and schools that are doing their very best to adjust their style and their content and the curriculum in order to take account of some of the immense changes that we're going through in the world at the moment. But in general, I think that the answer is a very scary one. And that answer is no, education is not changing anywhere near enough. You see, if we just look back a little bit in history, we need to understand where education has come from. The education system that you and I are most familiar with was actually designed during the beginnings of the industrial era. And it wasn't just designed with content in mind. Let me explain what I mean. What I mean is that that we didn't get a bunch of clever people who came up with all the contents that children needed to learn and then decide, well, what is the best way to package that content and come up with the education system? In fact, what actually happened was that clever people all sat down together and said, what type of people do we need in this new industrial age? And what type of world are we preparing them for? And so the school, as we know it, was born. Schools were built to look like factories, so that these mainly uh, rural and farm kids who had grown up as free spirits working on the farm, being quite creative and involved with the natural rhythms of life, would be socialized into a more block-type building. They would start at a certain time, end at a certain time. They were bells to indicate when one activity should start and the other should stop. They were put into desks and taught to think and work and be exactly the same. They were put into groups of 20 or 30 people uh, with a supervisor or a teacher at the front. They were taught not to ask too many questions because the teacher had all the information and their job was to learn the information and then repeat it back to the teacher later. You can see that it was a genius system. It was a perfect system designed perfectly for the world that these young people would enter into. And they came out of school not just with content, but also with a socialization into a type of life. But think about our world today. What type of people does the world need? What type of people will be successful? It might be overstating the point, but it appears to me that it's almost exactly the opposite. What we're looking for is is people who can think for themselves, who can find information when nobody knows what information they should even be looking for. People who are able to work on their own. If they're going to be flexi-time workers working from home, then they need to be able to work in a self-directed way. They need to be able to work away from teams. Uh, They need to have flexibility. Uh, in how they work. They need to not just work during set hours, but be comfortable working evenings or taking mornings off and working through weekends, but then taking the Monday off to recover. We could go on. Uh, You just need to look through the rest of this blog to see some of the thoughts that we have about the workplace of the future, the type of environment that we think brings the best out of people, that provides to coin of phrase, an enviable workplace. But the people coming into that workplace need not only content and information and not only skills but also a socialization and that's what schools should be aiming at. Now I think that there are some very simple things that we can do and some very profound ones as well. Maybe the profound ones first. Have a look at o2learn.co.uk Uh, This is a wonderful website sponsored by O2, the telecoms company here in the UK. 
And what they're planning to do is take every aspect of the national curriculum of the United Kingdom and ask teachers around the country to offer a recording, a video or an audio recording of their best effort at presenting each of the components of the curriculum. They're then going to put that information online and ask students from around the country to rate those various entries. The best ones will rise to the top, the worst ones will be deleted from the system. And within 10 years or so, I think the target for O2 Learn is 10 years, within 10 years we could have every single building block of the entire national curriculum available from the best teachers doing it in the best way possible. You can't imagine that there is one teacher that can teach every aspect of their subject in exactly the best way. But you could imagine that a thousand teachers may each have one thousandth of the piece of the puzzle. That means that ten years from now, or even before then, we could have the entire national curriculum presented by the best teacher in the best way for free, anywhere, everywhere, all of the time. Now you see, in the new world of work, we are arguing, and our research team is very clear that this is the trend, that actually professionals from across different professions are in real danger because their jobs could easily be replaced. You know, we can replace lawyers with computers, not for the most difficult and intensive part of the legal profession, but for the everyday uh, legal query, you don't have to pay hundreds of pounds to go to a lawyer to get an opinion. You see, the lawyer stands like, like I'm standing with a bookshelf full of books behind him or her to kind of give you the visual impact of, I know everything in these books and you ask me and I'll get that information and give it to you. Well, in my world, that's what Google's for. And if Google knows all of this stuff, well, then Google might be better at finding it than you. And the same with accountants, the same with engineers. Uh, in professions where we want the professionals to do the same things over and over again without taking too many risks and chances. You know, do you really want a creative engineer when they are building your house? Do you want a creative accountant when they're trying to put together your year-end reports? Do you want a creative GP when you go to the doctor? Or would you prefer a doctor who follows the prescribed diagnostic process laid out by the medical council of your country? In other words, do you want the computer? Let's be honest, most of the doctors we go to uh, have a look at some of our symptoms and then turn to their computers and go to net doctor anyway. And in fact, we prefer that. We prefer the doctor to be sure, to catch up and make sure that he or she has all the newest, latest information about the disease that I might have. So this is not something we should be scared of. It's actually something most of us want. So if the other professionals could be replaced by machines, then seriously, why not teachers? Why can we not learn some of this curriculum from home? And if we have the very best teachers teaching each item in the very best way, surely that's going to be engaging and exciting to students. There's a lot we'd need to think through here in terms of a new model for school. But I'm suggesting nothing less than an entirely new model from school. A model that not just gives us new content about the new world of work, but also gives us new socialization in which we sometimes come together to work as a team on team projects and sometimes work alone, in which we sometimes stay at home to do what we need to do and sometimes go into the office or the school to do it. A, a whole new way of working, sometimes working late into the evening, sometimes working early in the morning. Small changes, though, can be made as well. Uh, we're not going to change the big education system anytime soon and if like you, if like me, you have children at school, you could link them into O2 Learn already. Uh, you might also want to look at iTunes University. If you have an iTunes account, go into iTunes and across the top you'll see music, uh, podcasts, apps and iTunes U. 
That's iTunes University. And in iTunes University, you will find hundreds, probably thousands, of free university courses available for you to download and go through in your own time. Some of them are actually being quite clever, where having gone through the content for free, you can then contact the university and write an exam and then actually get a qualification or a course credit, at least. You know, most teachers I know, and I have many teachers even in my family, my sister, my father, and uncles and aunts, most teachers went into teaching because they were passionate about teaching, about shaping and molding the next generation. I don't think teachers are going to oppose these changes, not the good ones anyway. And you know what? Most of those teachers understood that this was not a life of high income uh, and high rolling fame. Most of them do it as a calling, not a job, as a passion. And that's why they will be prepared to do all of this for free or for little remuneration. I'm not saying we should take advantage of them, but I'm saying that this isn't going to cost much. That's why all of these resources I've spoken about are already available for free. We can take the best teachers providing the best input at every level of our curriculum from primary to high school and into university and college for free and make it available to our children. You can do that right now as a parent or a teacher. All it takes is a little bit of time and a little bit of effort. And hopefully we can rescue the current generation of students from a horrible education system that is not preparing them for the new world of work. Let me stop there. This is starting to get into preach mode and I hope I haven't sounded like I'm ranting. I'm suggesting that your company can do education this way of your staff, that you as a parent can help your children to do this, that you as a teacher can help your students to learn to access this new world of work, not just the content, but also the style of learning that we need to build really great workplaces of the future. Why don't you join me in the revolution of a new world of work? I've been Graham Codrington from tomorrow today for the Enviable Workplace blog.